For many years, this valley had been a small mining outpost. It wasn't until Sharper Valentine built his fertilizer company that Beacon Pines was established. Over the next 30 years, the town had grown and prospered until the foul harvest. Foul harvest. Sudden death. Sudden death. That sounds sus, doesn't it? In the six years since, everyone was simply trying to get by. Sorry, young Mr. Van Horn. Can't talk now. Very busy with preparations. Mayor Augustus Valentine was not busy. Oh, sorry, Gus. How many times do I? It's Mayor Valen. <sighs> Flustered, Gus instinctively loosened his tie. Up the good work. I must briefly attend to a concerned citizen. Is that us? It's nothing. Keep at it. All right. What can the mayor of Beacon Pines do for you today? Oh, just saying hi, I guess. Humph. Well, good day to you, young Mr. Van Horn. Hey, Mr. Kerr. Hey there, pal. William Kerr was the CEO of Perennial Harvest Company. He had become a fixture around town over the past few years. After the failing of Valentine Fertilizer, the town was hungry to welcome a new source of employment. You know, that to me is sus. One huge business in town fails and another one starts up almost immediately and their CEO is a hyena with a grin like that. But time will tell if I am right. Excited for the big festival? Oh, um, sure. Come on now, when I was your age, there was nothing more exciting than a town festival. Food, the music, the dancing. Sounds pretty all right. Yeah, gosh dang right it is. I'm looking forward to letting off some steam myself. Make sure to invite all of your little friends. I couldn't keep Rolo away if I tried. Excellent. Sorry, Luca, I've got to get back to the proverbial grindstone. Now, why would a hyena want uh, Luca to bring his friends? He's going to gobble them up, isn't he? It's a sacrifice. He's going to eat them all. A harvest awaits. Harvest of the young children and all that. I hate people that do that when you're trying to hang a poster. Right, let's go find um, Rolo. Oh, hello, who are you? Hey, Jetson. This is Jetson, people. Say hi to Jetson. Is the line playing any tunes today? No bites this morning, I'm afraid. Come to think of it, I can't remember the last time I reeled one in. Bye, hey. Bye, hey. I think I might said to be but. But hey, it was never about the catch. This is where I come to think. Yeah, that's what my dad used to do here. That reminds me. If we ever want his chair back, I've taken to standing recently. Keeps me from falling asleep at the reel. Oh, I like what they did there. Don't mind, I think it should stay. Not at all. An empty chair makes for a great listener. Whenever Luca saw his dad's chair by the pond, it reminded him of the days they'd pack up a couple of sandwiches and fish until sundown. Wait, his dad died? Wait a minute, wait. Hold phone. His dad died six years ago. The foul rot, the foul harvest, whatever it is, that kicked in about six years ago. Is there a connection here? Am I making up a conspiracy theory? Mum has gone missing. Dad died. I don't know. We haven't been told how long Mum is missing for yet, have we? Oh, we could just... Oh, look, mem memory time! Memory time! This was not in the demo. Memory time. We go to fishing. Immediately, the game's gone up one star because we can fish. This is Daddy. Go pick out your bait from the tackle box, buckaroo! Which I guess is this thing over here. Luca opened the tackle box and picked the perfect bait. Tickle junk. Junk bait, tickle bait. I don't know. What do we want? Luca junk. tied a shoestring to the hook. What fish could resist a nice shoestring? How would he tie a tickle? If I'd picked tickle, I've... <laughs> how do you tie a tickle to this to it? Sparkly fish. Oh, easy there, buckaroo. You don't know your own strength. I'm going to try to tickle it. I want to... 
I want to tie a tickle. Let's see what happens if we tie a tickle. A feather onto the hook. Feather. Clever. Good for skimming the surface. The fish has bitten. The feather. We are reeling the fish in. Slowly this time. Doing it properly. As if I know what I'm doing. Fishing. Ow! Oh, I made myself jump. <laughs> I made myself jump. What the heck? It's a rubber duck. In it. Well, I'll be switched. It's your old rubber ducky. Are we done fishing? Can we get on with life now? I'm bored fishing. Yeah, we can. Good. Alright, goodbye. Oh, no, go back. There was something on the sign. Look. Mission control. Authorised personnel only. The boys had a good thing going. As long as they kept old Jeff happy. Who's old Jeff? They had an endless source of precious materials to add to the treehouse. It's Jeff. All right, Rolo, I am here. Talk to me, buddy. In his relaxed, chill position. Tell me about it. Nope, I've got to go right up to him. On certain nights, when the clouds were just right, the boys could tune into strange patterns of static. <sighs> Rolo thinks it's aliens. He always thinks it's aliens. Okay, what's this top secret plan to start our summer? So you know, the abandoned warehouse by my place. The old Valentine building. Yeah, well, it isn't abandoned. What makes you think that? Get this. Last night, it was glowing. Glowing? Oh, sure. Kinda. That place has been empty since... Since the foul harvest. Yeah. Who would even want to poke around that place? We would, Rolo. We would. Wait, wait, wait. It's just a busted old warehouse. I just meant we could do some research at the library. You want to actually go to the warehouse? What do you expect to find? Answers. My mum's out there somewhere. She might be in the warehouse. And it seems like everyone wants to pretend that she's gone for good. You don't have to come, Rolo, if you don't want to. Luca. Remember that time I saw... Luca, remember that time I sort of accidentally burned down the chicken coop? There's a story here, Luca. And you jumped in and said it was your fault before my path throttled me. This is a flaming chicken coop sort of deal. I've got your back. Thanks, Rolo. Now that I think about it... Poking around a decrepit fertilizer warehouse is exactly how I want to spend the first day of summer. Let's go. More things to explore. Satellite dish. <laughs> Satellite dish. Rolo nearly killed himself putting that up into the tree. This is so cool, this tree house. I love what they've done here. Get charm. Oh! While it didn't turn the radio into an interstellar communicator, as he'd hoped, it did at least boost the signal enough to overhear truckers one town over. Come on, Andy. Grab his wallet. I'm sorry, Iggy. I can't. Do it or we pound ya. Yep. Yeah, but my mum said. Yeah, but, yeah, but. If I had a nickel for every yeah, but, I'd be the freaking king of nickels. Or the king of butts. Ain't that right, Tish? Yep. Mr. Van Horn, do you have a moment? No, not really. It's just Luca. Golly, I'm sorry. It's my first week at perennial harvest. He pulled a pen from the pocket of his sweater vest and began to frantically jot something down on a clipboard. Wonderful. It won't happen again. If we are going to be on first name basis, then you can call me Pete. Oh, nice to meet you, Pete. Sorry, what are you writing? Oh, just documenting. Gosh, it's exciting to be part of something so darn special. You know, it's not just about new fountains and phone booths. We're going to change the world. It all starts here in Beacon Pines. Isn't that amazing? Uh-huh. 
Anyway, I better go. Oh, that reminds me. We'd love to hear your thoughts. My thoughts? You bet. If we're going to change this town, we need to get every detail right. That sounds intense. Ha ha ha! Changing the world is intense. So what to say? Could you answer a few questions? Well, I guess if it's quick. Wonderful. Open to answering a few questions. One down. See, it's not that hard. So that was the question, was it? Okay, we're going already. Question two. What is something you love about Beacon Pines? I've never really thought about it before. Perfect. It's the only place I've lived. See, that wasn't so painful. Pete stopped scribbling and glanced up from the clipboard. Was it? Uh-huh, I guess not. Huzzah! Our first few questions answered in record time. Are you literally writing down everything? Thank you so much for your time. I need to process these answers. Okay. Our harvest awaits. Right, look at Rolo. Are you right there, Rolo? Rolo? Rolo's got bored waiting. I think he's about to fall over and collapse in a heap. I'm just catching my breath a bit. Go on, I'll catch up. Holden Wilder ran the local paper of record. Beacon, beacon. The beacon, beacon. Hey, Mr. Wilder. Morning, Luca. What's the day have in store for you? I was wondering if you heard any news about news. The Beacon Beacon knows the news that needs knowing. Any news about the old fertilizer warehouse? No. Nope. Oh. Rollo thought he saw lights there last night. Hmm. Rollo ought to be careful poking around that part of town. Winds of change are blowing. Change is a dangerous animal. Miss Hatch could often be found near the fountain. Too absorbed in a book to be distracted. Two wandered down the wooded path, unaware of the danger ahead. Oh. Oh, this is getting good. Which way are we supposed to be going? What's this? History Museum. Hey, Bert. Hi, Luca. I'm doing some fact checking for the town history exhibit. Look, kid, I'm just here to put up the lights. But did you know, when the town was founded, there were only seven citizens and they all worked for a mining company and there was only one dirt road leading to town. And there still is only one road leading to town. Oh, right. We're just looking for charms, don't mind me. Who's this schmuck? Hey, Griffin. How's the ice cream gig going? Not great still pretty cold out and I'm in the business of selling cold I'm sure things will warm up soon Mr Tolliver's not at his grocery stand he's prepping for the festival I guess surely he's gonna sell some ice cream in the festival gotcha no touching we've touched it it did a bit more than touch it we whacked it I think so we have to go this way Luca just the fella I was looking for. Hey, Roxy, what's up? Oh, right. Rendezvous with Roxy. This is an important turning point. Ooh, okay, important turning point. Let's pay attention. The first time where your charms will change the course of fate. No pressure. And currently, we only have one suitable charm at our disposal. Have no fear. We can always return later using the Chronicle once we find more charms. Well, now I'm just rambling. Where were we? Can ramble away I like how she sounds have you seen my blockhead brother today he skipped out before breakfast well not really no can't say I won't say big difference Roxy would I lie to you look at that cheeky little grin here he comes Luca wait up I almost forgot to tell you Roxy might be lurking around here this is one of her favourite places to stand around and be useless. Rolo. So we need to make sure she doesn't spot us. Rolo. She's just around a corner, mate. Why are you doing that turning thing with your body? What? You're not scared, are you? She's harmless. And a chump. And she's right around that corner, isn't she? 
There we go. We've got into trouble with Rolo. That was easy enough. Don't mind me. Just over here lurking uselessly. Oh, hey, sis. Nice weather we're having, eh? I couldn't help but notice you snuck out this morning before breakfast. Wasn't hungry. Also, couldn't help but notice your morning chores were left unchored. It's got to be more to life than puny carrots. Look, Roxy, Luca and I have places to be, so if you don't mind... Oh, I do mind. I'm not going to catch hell again because of you. So either you march yourself home and harvest those carrots, or I haul you home myself. Damn it, turning point time. Let's pay attention. Took a step toward him, cracking her knuckles. Rose, cracking her knuckles. Oh my God, she means business. Luca knew he had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home. Uh oh. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little. Oh, we can only use chill. All right. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. Come on, Roxy. It's the first day of summer. The sun's shining and we just want to take it easy. Let's leave tomorrow's problems for tomorrow. That's great and all, but Rolo's problems have a way of becoming my problems. And pa always says, tomorrow's work is best left for yesterday. March, you big oaf. Ah, oh, rats. So we've lost Rolo. I expect a full report about the Valentine place. Surely you're not going to go without him. That would be really silly. A full report. Oh, we are. We are going to investigate the Valentine warehouse alone. Hey, Solomon. Apologies. No time for chit chat. Oh, all right. Bye. Jeff's hardware closed down about a year ago. The effects of the foul harvest stretched wide. When there are no crops in the field, tractors don't need fixing. The library's closed. Looks like the library hasn't opened yet. I'll check back later. <laughs> How he talks. Look at my boy. Hold up a tick. Oh, hey, Mr. Nuncreed. I was just on my way to... I just sold the last jar of your grandmother's preserves. Can't stop the shelves fast enough, turns out. So this dude runs the local drugstore. Hey, that's great, but I'm actually... I guess Juniper will just have to swing by with more of her lovely jam. So we sell jam in the drugstore. Why not? Uh-huh. Well, don't let this old man slow you down. You just remind her that she still owes me that dance. A promise Gran regretted the second it was made. Will do. She's a fine woman, that Juniper. Mr. Nuncreed has desires on our Gran. Yeah, she's pretty cool, I guess. A real fine woman. Uh, gotta go. Sweeter than any jam on earth. Let it go, Nuncreed. Let it go. The phone booth was brand new. Part of Perennial Harvest's Beacon Pines Reborn initiative. It didn't see much use. They've all got cell phones. Oh, hello. Who are you? Oh, hey, Luca. Hey, Joey. How's the bug hunt going? Not great. Bugs have been shy this week. Bugs get shy? For sure, bugs aren't that different from people. Sometimes they just want to be left alone. You're going into weep wood. Be careful where you step. No bug crunching, got it? Luca peeked up at the beehive. It appeared to be deserted. Are we going into weep wood? Hmm, that's strange. Deserted beehive. Ooh, what's this? This is fancy. After the foul harvest destroyed their wealth and reputation, the Valentines shuttered off their estate from the rest of town. Oh, have they moved out or are they still there then? The Valentine Mansion loomed over every other building in town, both figuratively and literally. Who lives here? 
Nothing to see here, Luca, I'm afraid, buddy. Into Weepwood we go. The path led into a small hollow at the edge of Weepwood. Okay, no turning back now. You can, mate. You can. I wouldn't recommend doing it on your own. Caution, electrified fence. In fact, if you're watching, children, I wouldn't recommend you do this at all. Is that sign new? The fence thrummed with a gentle electric buzz. Thrummed. Such a good word. Okay, so what would Rolo do if he was Luke here? He often asked himself what Rolo would do. So that he could rule out that option. I'm definitely not touching that thing. Zap. Sparks flew from the fence. The light atop that section shut off. Two bulbs remained. Then we have to throw things at it. That's two. One more to go. The fence's buzzing gave way to silence. Okay, moment of truth. Every kid in town knew the old Valentine Fertilizer Building. Long abandoned, the warehouse once served as the industrial heart of Beacon Pines. So if this is a fertilizer building, why is it glowing green? Is this responsible for the foul harvest? Let's not forget, people. It is a mystery game. It is cute, but it is a mystery game. There is a mystery to solve, or two. Now, it stood only as a reminder of things left behind. The dormant building showed strange signs of life. Okay, so Rolo wasn't exaggerating for once. What's going on here? There was only one way to find out. The water looked almost diseased. It flowed slowly into the woods. The hose emitted a subtle sound. It was actively draining some kind of liquid. Green gunk, I'd imagine. Wow, that smells awful. Too bad Rolo's not here. He'd have no problem poking around in there. Oh, okay, we've investigated the warehouse alone. Locked. Luca thought he heard faint sounds coming from the other side of the door. He pressed his ear against the cold metal to hear better. A zipper? What steps? The sound of footsteps grew louder. Luca, go. Go, Luca! Why is he still standing by the door? Hello? Hello? Just trying to break in. Hello? Can you let me in? Zero, two, nine. Shit. The heavy steel door knocked Luca to the ground. Disoriented, he looked up to see an imposing figure silhouetted in a green glow. It lunged toward him. He tried to scramble away, but felt a gloved hand latch onto his ankle. Luca watched his fingernails leave trails in the dirt as the hand slowly dragged <gasps> him back through the door into the lab into the oh no light. luca has been taken into the lab this story is about change this is a story about change it was far from the sort of change luca imagined for himself he's now become the hulk Urgh. but change is after all a dangerous animal oh yeah who said that mr beacon pine man beacon beacon pine man him the end? That's it. That's the end. Thank you for coming. It's been emotional. Goodbye. I probably should have warned you about this. There are many paths that our story can take. Most will end in tragedy. But don't let that discourage you. We will find the ending that this story deserves. I just know it. Just know it. From here on out, a charm will have a check mark when it's been used to its full potential at a given turning point. Okay, wait. Let's read that again. So when a charm has a tick next to it, it means it's been used to its full potential at a turning point. Now, let's try something different. So look, it's got chill. Chill has got a tick. Shit does not. The only one we can really change. If we go there. The best way to deal with an enraged Roxy is to be a little shit. 
Let's do that. The way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little shit. Kick her. Make a break for it. What have you done? Ah! Did that little shit just kick me? Yeah, he did. Run all you want, you little twerps. You gotta come home eventually. Just knock Mr. Solomon over. Is that his name? Oh, we've got to investigate the warehouse with Rolo now. Sorry about that. Rolo can get overexcited at times. Solomon Valentine. Current ward of and future successor to the Valentine fortune. Huffed as he brushed off his pants. A town of complete and utter fools. One wonders if it's worth taking anything here seriously. Either way, I'm really sorry. No matter. How are you doing? Me? Yes. With all that business about your mother and whatnot. Oh, I'm getting by. Still no word from her at all? No. That is truly a shame. Charm! Who's this? Is that is that Solomon's dad? Solomon, Solomon. a gesture toward the approaching heiress Valentine. Heiress, so his mother, his mummy. What sort of gesture did Solomon trifle towards the heiress? Speak of the devil. Do not wander off like that. I'm much too busy to be looking all over for you. Apologies, heiress. I was just taking a stroll through town. Strolls are for commoners. Woo! You're a valentine now. I want you to be present for the construction of the History Museum. The future of this town relies on its ability to remember our family's great past. Of course. Bye then, Solomon. Nice chat. I win. Little help. I am the champion. We were racing. Did that road get longer? Like anything ever changes around here. It seemed longer. You're just lightheaded from the run. You really need to pace yourself better next time. Not sure why I would take advice from second place. Has that sign always been here? Wait, what? Caution, electrified fence. Nope, that's definitely new. Creepy. How are we going to get around an electric fence? Don't worry, I've got this. And that is exactly what Lucas said he would do. As the glowing windows of the old warehouse came into view, Rollo began to bounce excitedly. Check it out. Dang, Rollo, you weren't exaggerating for once. Was there ever any doubt? This definitely needs investigating. Good thing two ace detectives are on the case. This is bizarre. This is awesome. Rumble. Did you feel that? What? The excitement in the air? You betcha, but I did. Why, why is he jumping in the green gunk? Why would you do that? You might, like... Uh, what's the word? Dissolve. Dissolve your shoes. Check out this puddle. That's not normal. Pepper Pig says, gotta have your wellies on when you're jumping in muddy puddles. Ah oh, man, the door's locked. Try harder. No dice, it won't budge. Oh well. This dumpster is new, right? I bet it's got stuff in it. Can't really see what's in here. Who did all of this? My nose is itching. I think I smell some treasure. Oh, sure, that isn't the hazardous waste. Just help me get in. Why would you go in? Rolo, it would be my honour to throw you in the trash. Come on, lady luck. So what's in there? Let's see. There's a squishy bag of squish. Wow. A good inch of stagnant sludge Oh, his mum's going to be so happy when he gets home with all that washing to be done. Your natural habitat. Wait, hold the phone. Hold two phones. Check these bad boys out. 
are those? Porky talkies. Just like Hank Atomic communicators. Do this actually work? Ground command to Hank Atomic. Hank, do you read me? This is Hank Atomic, Ground Command. You're coming in five by five. How? Um How are your vital readouts, Hank? It's getting a little stuffy in here. Requesting assistance for evac. Help is on the way. Footsteps! What was that? Someone's coming. Give me your hand. I'm trying. My hands are covered in squish. Uh-oh. Scoot over. I'm coming in. It's the man again. Number 29. gonna be dumping something in the dumpster ah tell me you saw that dude I don't know what I saw it's coming back get down he's not gonna close the dumpster this time the boy sat petrified under the weight of the bag oh god tell me that's not what I think it is Luca, do you know what separates run of the mill detectors from ace detectives? A ridiculous hat. When the chips are down, ace detectives dig deeper for clues. Felt around at the large sack which burdened them. Aha! They snapped off a tag from just within a small zipper opening in the bag. It's some sort of badge or something. What's it say? It held the badge up to a faint shaft of light within the dumpster. Dr. Prescott, deep engineering. It's a name tag. Who would throw away a bag full of slimy old name tags? I think it's just one name tag in a bag full of something else. Okay, okay, okay. I think we should make a break for it. Stay calm. This is no time to panic. I'm not panicking. You're panicking. Rolo, calm down. You don't have to squeeze my hand so hard. Dude, I'm not holding your hand. <gasps> Quit messing around. What other slime-covered hand would be in here? Ah! Look at that hand. That's just minging. Ah! Lob's hand out. I'm beginning to see the benefits of your run for our lives plan. Right, we've clearly established that I'm faster than you, so I'll go first. Why not go together? Flaming chicken coop, Luca. I'll make sure the coast is clear. After I go, count to 100. This is a bad idea, Rolo. You hear me yell? Run! If you don't hear me yell, run! Actually, either way, call ass. Rolo, I'll give you credit. Sure found an eventful way to start our summer. It's what I do. Well, here goes nothing. Luca sat in the dark tracking the sound of Rollo's footsteps as he ran. One, two, three. Seriously, seriously going to count to 100. Wall, straining to hear Rollo's footsteps as they faded away. 15, 16, 17. He tried not to think about the contents of the dumpster as he counted. There is no way I'd be in that dumpster for longer than five nanoseconds with a dead body above me. I'd be out there. 35, 36, 37... The thick stench made it hard to breathe. Screw it, that's long enough. Luca carefully lifted the lid and peered out. Nothing. No sign of Rollo. No sign of the man in the yellow suit. Time to haul ass. Luca clambered from the dumpster, stumbling to his knees. He was up like a shot and running, sprinting toward home as fast as he could. Beacon Pines flew by, blurred by the tears that welled up in his eyes. He wouldn't remember getting home at all that night. Throwing his front door open, why wouldn't he remember it? To his room and surrendering to sleep almost as abruptly as he hit his pillow. I hope he had a shower, it's covered in green gunk. This is where I'm ending today's video. Thanks for watching. Hit like while you're here, pop me a comment down below, and sub if you've yet to do so. Check out my other videos, there will be something there that you enjoy. Until next time, ciao for now.